So let's first define the traveling salesman problem as a decision problem. So now we want to define it as a yes no problem. Okay, so now traveling salesman in its decision form, TSP decision, given a, the same thing, a complete weighted, undirected graph. and a target cost T determine if the graph has a simple cycle that goes through all vertices, all vertices, and has a cost less than or equal to t. By the way, you know, we will, uh, this uh, simple cycle that goes through all vertices, so this, a simple cycle that goes through all vertices. From now on, we'll call this a TSP tour. We will refer to this as TSP cycle, this. TSP cycle that goes through all vertices. From now on, we will call this a TSP tour. So here, this is TSP tour. So determine if the graph has a TSP tour uh, determine if the graph has a, a TSP tour with cost <coughs> has a TSP tour so let's just rewrite it with TSP tour has a TSP tour with cost less than or equal to T okay so what's the difference between these two formulations here it's it's open, right? So uh, find the best possible TSP tour. Here, determine if there is a TSP tour with cost less than or equal to T. Okay. Now the question. Let's try to understand that this the the relation between the the decision problem and the optimization problem. By the way, this decision problem is still not easy. So in fact, this problem is MP complete. So let's look into this. <coughs> if you have an algorithm, an algorithm that solves, that can solve TSP decisions, can solve TSP decision. Can you use this algorithm? So this algorithm is going to take a graph and a target T. So the input to this algorithm is a graph and a target T. And what's the output? Hmm? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, yes or no. Now, if I give you an algorithm, and uh, you know, this is, this is just Hypothetical. So assuming that, assuming that I give you such an algorithm, how can you use it to find the value of the optimal solution to the optimization problem? So I can give you a, a, a assume that you have an algorithm, that you can give it a graph and a target T, and then it tells you and it tells you whether there is a solution or there is a TSP tool with cost less than or equal to the t that you input to it. How can you use this? How can you employ this 
to find the value of the optimal solution to the optimization problem, to the optimization. We can backtrack based on the yes or no solution. If we get a no, we can backtrack. What do you mean by backtrack? Mm -hmm. Well, so let's, let's simplify things. So I give you this graph. So how can you use, you know, here the solution is uh, 1, 3, 2, 2, so that's what, 4 plus 4, 8, right? So the optimal solution here, optimal solution equals 8, which is this. How can you find this 8 using this algorithm? We can give values for t from 0, and the first one time we get yes. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's the idea. So you can just, you know, you give it the graph, and you give it 0. It's going to tell you no. There is no TSP tour. <coughs> you know, with cost zero. Then you give it the graph and one, and it's going to tell you no, and it will keep saying no until you give it the graph and eight, then it tells you yes. And then you know that uh, eight is the optimal solution because it's the, f the smallest value that gave a yes. Everything else is a no. So that's how you can, you know, this is the relation between an optimization problem and a decision problem. So you can think of, uh, you know, you can think of an optimization problem as consisting of uh, a sequence of decision problems, or that you can decompose or analyze an optimization problem into a sequence of decision problems. Or, in other words, stated differently, uh, if I give you an algorithm for solving the decision problem, you can iteratively use it to solve the optimization problem. But you'll have to, to, to do it iteratively. You have to uh, apply this algorithm multiple times. Okay? So now, you know, this kind of search, in fact, sometimes we use this in practice. So this is not, you know, this idea is not only theoretically interesting, but from a practical point of view, sometimes, it may be easier to build uh, uh, or to develop an algorithm that solves the decision problem, and you can do you can use it in practice to solve an optimization problem. So this is something that may be done in practice, can is used in practice. So to make this efficient, now here we started with zero, but now if I ask you, by looking at this graph. Can you come up with a way, a simple way of calculating a lower bound that is better than zero? So we're starting from zero, but we're, we're obviously wasting a lot of time. You know, we're invoking this algorithm with values that are obviously, uh, you know, for which the answer is clearly no. So can you think of a way of computing a better lower bound? Because you can think of this zero as a lower bound. Can you suggest an algorithm for computing a better lower bound? Suggestion? A lower bound could be you could just take the edges and then sort them from, uh, by edge weight and then select the v minus one, or yeah, v, v minus one smallest ones. Okay. Well, in this case, it's v, not v minus one, right? Because this is a cycle, not a path. Okay. Remember, yeah, so v minus one is the number of edges, the minimum number of edges that you need to connect a number of vertices, and that will give you a tree. So if you add one more edge to a tree, it becomes a cycle. You will have a cycle. So in this case, you, you, you have four, or v. You need v edges for a cycle. It's not a tree. This is a cycle. So v, yeah. So what you are saying is absolutely right. Look at all the edges and take the minimum v edges. Right. So in this case, we have six edges, right? Sort them and take the minimum edge weight. So in this case, it's going to be one, <coughs> two, 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 three, one thousand, right? So this is the sorting. So what do we pick? We pick the first four. So this will give us give us an, a lower bound of one, two, two. That's uh, a lower bound of six, seven. So this is a very good lower bound here. 
Of course, you know, there are ways of computing better lower bounds for the traveling salesman problem. So by making this observation that the best tool will not have a cost any lower than this because it will have to have V edges. And these are the lowest V edges, seven. So instead of starting from zero, we just start from seven. We skip zero through six, and we start from seven. Seven is going to say no, then eight is going to say yes. So now we did it in two iterations. So clearly here, the tighter our lower bound is, the faster we, we will be going to solve this uh, problem. Okay, so can you think of another lower bound? Not necessarily, you know, the lowest, uh, you know, the lowest uh, V edges, because you can have all of these edges being uh, incident on one, well, at least V minus one of them incident on one vertex. So you can have something like, you know, A has uh, you know, the lowest weight edges, one, 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 and then you have a vertex B that has seven, ten, eleven, one thousand. So in this case, will the lowest V edges be a good lower bound? So would you go to the adjacency list of each one and select the lowest? Yeah, exactly. So that will give you a better lower bound in general. Maybe not in this example, but in general, you have to have an edge. In fact, for a cycle, you have to have two edges for each vertex. It's a cycle. So each vertex will have to have two edges, right? So in this case, you can take the lowest two edges for each vertex, and then, <coughs> so for example, for the, for the A, you pick uh, 1 and 2. For the B, you pick 1 and 2. For C, you will pick uh, 2 and 3. For D, you pick uh, 2 and 2. So this is going to give you, well, Three, three, five, four. Is this a lower bound? Will this give you a lower bound? Well, so what, do, what should you do with this? What if you divide it by two? Right? So b because this is your, uh, you're assuming that you're counting each edge twice. Right? So. There are edges that are counted twice. But even if you, if you take the minimum, you just take the minimum for each. So let's say for each vertex, we take the minimum. So we take one for, for A and one for B and uh, two for C and two for D. This will give us six. So. But here, if you divide this by 2, what will you get? So, uh, 9, 7.5. Seven seven hmm? Yeah, so you'll get 7.5. So this will give you 7, you know, a lower bound of 7. Anyway, so, and in fact, you can find there are better ways of computing lower bounds for the, for the traveling <coughs> problem. Now, what about upper bounds? Can you think of an upper bound? Can you think of an algorithm for computing an upper bound for the traveling salesman problem? At all edges. Hmm? At all the edges. Well, but this will not be a useful upper bound. Well, it can't be higher than that. <laughs> okay. So again, you know, we have to distinguish between a valid upper bound and a useful upper bound. So. Okay, that's an excellent idea. Yes. So if you just solve it using using any solution, the, the simplest solution, and the simplest is usually a greedy solution. So if you solve it using a greedy solution, then 
that will give you an upper bound because it will give you a valid solution and the optimal solution is going to be less than or equal to the value given by the greedy solution. So that will give you an upper bound. So if you find a good lower bound and a good upper bound, you can use a solver for the decision problem to solve the optimization problem. Uh, so you can start the search you know, from an upper bound instead of starting from a lower bound. So if, if there are greedy, well, the greedy here is, doesn't give you a good solution, but if the greedy gives you, say, 10, and you input 10 and it tells you yes, then you try 9, and 9 tells you yes, then 8 is going to tell you yes, then 7 will tell you no. So you know that the last yes is the optimal solution. So you can start from a lower bound or an upper bound.